All right, good morning, and welcome to the Webinar Talk Show. I'm Eliz Green. And I am Tom Singer, and Eliz and I decided long time ago that webinars could do better than being a talking head over PowerPoint, and we believe that dynamic interviews with people really are a way to showcase not only the expert, but their content. Absolutely. And right now, we are all dealing with a lot of change. Like we kind of all settled into this shelter at home thing, and now things are starting to open up again. And guess what? More change. And, you know, Tom, when we were talking about who do we want to invite on the show to talk about change? I know it, one person who knows yeah, so much <laughs> about dealing with change that it had to be her. It had to be, and luckily <laughs> she said yes. So we are interviewing Chris Clark Epstein today. She has spent the almost last 20 years looking at how people and organizations deal with change. And right now she's just trying to figure out the future. So how about if we figure it out together? Welcome to the webinar talk show, Chris Clark Epstein. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There she is. People who are talking about waving on um, <laughs> these kinds of things, they say, you know, in all the meetings I've ever gone to, I've never walked out of the room and said, bye-bye, or hello. <laughs> so no, this is actually sign language for applause. I know. So I I'm, think, I'm applauding that you're there. I think I'm the first applauding time, that you're there. I think the first time I'm on a live stage again as a speaker, the whole audience will have done this so much for Zoom. I'm just expecting the whole audience to just go like that. I think we fun. should. All, I think we should all make ourselves frames, and we could just come out like this. <laughs> <laughs> just so everybody feels comfortable. Just walk out yeah. with a big cardboard frame that says "Zoom" right Zoom. across the top, right. and everyone will feel. Or yeah. you make a really big one that has three things, and put <laughs> yourself in the middle. Yeah. So. And like someone else's picture there. That's a great yeah. idea. That would I'm going to really steal that, The Chris. CEO and the meeting planner. Yeah. I'm totally going to rip that one off. That's I, awesome. I think you should. Without a doubt. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right, Chris. So if you could yeah. pull out your crystal ball. Okay. Because I know over the years in your career as a professional speaker and a trainer, you have um, navigated many changes along the road. So could you pull out that crystal ball with all of your experience and tell us when are things going to get back to normal so we can move ahead? Okay. So if I were in charge of the world, which mm -hmm. I think about a lot because, and I'm planned if the phone ever rings and they say, now's the time. I've got the whole project scoped out. <laughs> you're ready. Chris, are you telling us here on the webinar talk show, you're ready to take over the world? I, I am ready. All it's right. Mario Cuomo and then me, and, and <laughs> we'll get it all in place. So here, here's the things that I have learned in thinking about all of this. Um, we need to tell people the truth. Hmm. And if I were in charge of the world, the first thing I would do is start a segment on every broadcast that was, here's the list of things that you do not want to hear. Because <laughs> as, as long as we are playing with fantasy, we can't deal with the reality. And mm. on extraordinarily good scientific um, investigation, primarily by a woman whose name is Lori Garrett, who wrote a book called um, The Deadliest, The Deadliest Enemy, um, mm. which, which is hard to get a hold of. So I'm searching for it, but I have followed her career. And she says, the truth is two to three years is what it's gonna take. Two to three years. Mm. Um, since everybody is home baking bread, making cakes, you know, planting gardens, if, if you put seeds in the ground, you cannot go out and harvest the vegetables tomorrow. You have right. to put the seeds in the ground. They have to be nurtured. They have to be watered. Some of the seeds are duds. They have mm -hmm. to grow. And then at some time in the future, you can harvest what you planted. And if you put a cake in the oven, it has to bake for a mm -hmm. certain amount of time. If you don't let it bake for the whole time, you will have cake soup which is <laughs> ne 
not anywhere as good as a piece of cake that has a scoop of ice cream. I don't know. It kind of sounds good, though, doesn't it? <laughs> well, if, if in fact what you wanted was cake soup, that would be good. But vaccines take time. There is science involved. And mm -hmm. so, first of all, they have to find out, is it toxic? Because having right. a vaccine that you give to somebody and it causes them harm is not really helpful. And then once you give them the vaccine and find out it's not toxic, then you have to give it to a lot of people and find out if it's effective. And all of that is a time process. So the soonest that we could have anything is sometime next summer. Hmm. And then once you do that, you have to make it. And even if you, even if you make it, you, you then have to distribute it. So by the time you get enough people with the vaccine that it's effective to protect the herd, as they say, we're, we're talking well over a year. So all of the things that, and, and oh, by the way, the fact that we're opening things up and people think they can go places without a mask is just going to postpone this time frame. So masks and social isolation and washing your hands and, and giving up a hug from your grandchildren, all of mm. those things that are short-term, oh, crap. Can we use crap in those? Uh, um, yeah, okay. absolutely. Right. All of those things that are, are discouraging right now are the things that will help us get to where we ultimately want to go, um, go later. So, and, and, and truth be told, what we go back to is not going to be normal the way we mm. think of normal, because there's this thing called herd immunity. Um, I get, I don't get to talk about this because I'm socially <laughs> isolated. So I'm and, and my husband, Frank, has heard it all 47 <laughs> times. So he, he's a little over it. Um, ultimately, these viruses, the, the goal, and, and we have tons of them floating around all the time, mm -hmm. the, the reason that they lose their effectiveness is this thing called herd immunity. Viruses live in us. So vi viruses aren't even alive, which is kind of weird. <laughs> they, they jump from person to person. So in the way we are right now, if I had it, you guys are safe because I'm right. not in the same space as, as you are. On the other hand, if we were in the same room, the virus says, oh, okay, we're done with Chris. Let's go to Elizabeth. Yeah. So, Please don't. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, you've got such a lovely smile and why wouldn't I want to go to you? <laughs> Uh, so, you know, and, and again, as people keep saying, the virus doesn't care. They just mm -hmm. want a host. They're, that's their survival. So as long as there's places to jump, and, and that's what happened with um, the great influenza, the Spanish flu, mm -hmm. which, by the way, started in Kansas. Right. Uh, it, but, but there was censorship in the United States because of World War I. So they didn't mm -hmm. let anybody talk about it, but there was no censorship in Spain, in Spain. So that's why they got labeled, just a little historical fact. Um, anyway, what, what happened with the Spanish flu was it jumped, it, it was so widespread that it jumped from person to person and finally got to the part where, or to the point where there weren't any more people for it to jump from. And that's why it died out. Well, they, they said that it was like one fifth of the entire world's population died from the Spanish flu. And right. my uncle, my mom's brother, who my mom never met because she was born later, but uh, my mom's, my uncle was one of the people, his entire second grade class was buried together. Oh. It, 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 is a, it is an amazing story. When, when this all started, I'm, I'm one of those people who in, in the Clifton Strength Finder, mm -hmm. I, I'm an input person. So I, I was like, oh my God, I got to know about this. And, and, I, and what I really wanted to know was I wanted to know one that was over. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. wanted to know the end of the story. So this was the first book that I got 
which turned out to be a textbook about modern medicine. So if you would like to pretend that you went to medical school, <laughs> I would I, highly recommend that. Well, and don't we all? Yeah, exactly. Well, we are, are all pretending that we're doctors. We might, might as well. <laughs> um, but it, 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 was, it was astounding to read what medicine wasn't at that time and, and what they came up with. And, and what they came up with was social isolation, wear your mask, and wash your hands. You know, so, <laughs> Sounds kind of familiar, really. Right. Here, here we are, a hundred years later. There, there is a track record there. So, anyway. So, well, it's 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 interesting that that you bring that up because you know that was you know this huge pandemic that impacted, like I said, one fifth of the world's world's population, and yet the world went on. What what followed it was right. the Roaring Twenties. Right. Um, so as an expert in dealing with cha change and uncertainty and everything over the years that you've been advising companies, your advice here was, hey, this is going to take us a while to get through it. So is that common with most change? Does it take a while for us to get through whatever the change is? I, I, think, I think there's two things that we can take away from that. I think it always takes longer than we want it to. Yeah. And I think people always want to pretend that we can go back to things the way they were. And so the, their, the, the desire to go back to the status quo, uh, let, me, let me give you a for instance. Um, for anybody who may be watching this or listening to this, um, if, you, if you wear a ring uh, on, on a hand, take it off and put it on the other hand. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I realize it's a look. All right, if that's it, too hard, it came it, off, but it ain't going on that other finger. On. It's okay, never and on. now, now I've got mine on the other hand, and it won't come off. So this is a good work. <laughs> Let me give you a different example. <laughs> I think okay. I'm resistant to change. Yeah, yeah. Cross, cross your arms. Just cross your arms. Okay, you do that. Okay. All right. Now uncross your arms and put the other one on top, and feel how awkward that is. <laughs> there, there I don't is enough. Like it. I, I know you don't. And there, and are your arms still crossed? Uh, here, here's the deal. There, there is nothing inherently different between crossing your arms one way or another. But you have a preference. You do it that way. Yeah. And if I stop talking in a minute, you'll uncross your arms. Yes. So, so inherently, what happens is we will do the change, especially if we have leadership that helps us understand why it is in our advantage to do the change. Excuse me while I try to get my ring off. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work for the expert either. Um, okay, so the issue is with good leadership, you'll go down the path of the change, but okay. left to your own devices, you'll go back to your original behavior. And here's what happens in organizations, and I see it all the time, you get, a change initiative announced and you know organizations do a big thing and they hire consultants yay and and we come <laughs> in and we and we do these big kickoffs and everybody gets all excited and there's videos and balloons and rewards and everything goes on and and those of us who get to be up front if we're smart hang around the back sometimes and you'll mm -hmm. see in the back They'll, they'll be a new person, somebody new in the organization who's all excited. Wow, this sounds really great. This is going to be wonderful. And, and they're getting swept up in the excitement. And then pretty soon you'll see one of the older term employees lean over and say, look, just keep your head down. Because in about two weeks, they'll forget all about it and we'll go back to the old way. And so what happens is most of our organizations, our families, and we as individuals encourage us to go back to the way things were. And if you've been watching the news, look at the number of people who are out and about in great crowds of people without masks on. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and all of a sudden, this becomes a symbol not of, I care about you and your health. I care about me 
and my health, it becomes I'm macho or I'm not macho or I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. You know, it, it, it is becoming a symbol of something that it isn't at all. Right, and that has and, nothing to do with it. Right, exactly. So that's how we, so, so the real trick is understanding what we need to do to sustain change and then disciplining ourselves to continue it. You know, one of the things that I find interesting, and I'm sure you'll actually know where this comes from because you're that person, you always connect the dots. But I, one of the things I understand to be true is that when you have a belief and then you receive information that that belief may not be correct, you, you're in this sort of uncomfortable position and until you like make another story on what is true it's very easy just to slide back to that thing that you now know maybe isn't true but you you keep sliding back there and i think that's one of the things that makes change difficult and i think that's at play here with the mask because at first the cdc said we didn't need them but now information has changed and it's easy to slide back. Right. And, and this goes back to what I said earlier about telling the truth. In, mm -hmm. in my segment of news you don't want to hear, <laughs> there, there, there's going to be a list of questions. And the questions are going to be things we do not know. Mm. Be, because people want certainty. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they want. So if somebody says, this is true, then... I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. And then when somebody tells me something else, I'm going to say, but wait a minute, you told me this is true. And so at the very beginning, bless their hearts, the scientists in an attempt to tell as much as they knew, forgot to say, however, <laughs> that may not be the final story. So, so we heard masks, then we heard no masks, and then we heard masks. And, and today's best scientific evidence is that, as my Jewish mother-in-law would have said, it can't hurt. So, <laughs> so the mask pr helps you not spit on me or aerosol on me, and right. it helps me not get your aerosol. So it's, it's not going to hurt. And, 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 as some, and as somebody who is in one of those high-risk um, mm -hmm categories, um, you're doing me a big favor. In fact, my husband and I were speculating the other day that I want to get a t-shirt that says, I take highly toxic cancer medication. You might want to wear a mask around me. <laughs> you, know, because, you know, I may yeah. be of more danger to you than, than you are <laughs> to me. So um, I, I ran across something, Liz, to what you just said um, yesterday, and it came from a, a teacher with a bunch of sixth graders, which I thought was brilliant. So I'm adding it to my repertoire. And, and the teacher was talking to the kids about listening and different ways of listening. And the kids came up with three possibilities of why you listen to somebody else. First of all, you listen to win. You know, that, that's the one we're all really good at. Okay, you keep talking and then I'm like, okay, here's what I'm going to say and mine is better than yours. So you could shut up now so I can spout right. my wisdom. So listen to win was number one. Number two was listen to fix. So you start talking and this is kind of your example and I'm listening and I'm thinking, you know, I really don't think that's right because I heard something else. So now my whole focus is how can I say something to fix what you're saying, because obviously I'm right and, and you're wrong. And, and again, gets you to a place of very little dialogue, very little helpful right. dialogue. But the third one is the one that's important, and that's listening to learn. Mm -hmm. And so if we can approach a dialogue, so, so you, we start, let's talk about the masks. And you say, gee, that's really interesting. You know, I was listening to uh, CNN last night and they 
and they had a person on who was saying that the masks really didn't make a, a big difference. And I say to you, huh, that's not what I heard on MSNBC last night. Who, do you remember the name of the expert that you were listening to? Because I'd like to do a little research mm -hmm. and hear what they have to say. Now, now we, now I can go look at what you heard. You could go look at what I heard. Then we could compare notes together, and we both come away more um, um, knowledgeable about what's going on. The thing about masks that's really interesting on CBS this morning, they did a really wonderful historical perspective. They've been using masks since the Black Death, mm -hmm. and, and and quite honestly. They don't work against the Black Death because that's not that's not how the Black Death that's is transmitted. So if you hear anything about the Black Death, you can toss your masks away. But but as long as we're we are where we are, keep your mask handy. So Chris, you said listening to learn, and the example mm -hmm. you used was so great. You 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 see it one way, I see it another. We both take that information and research it and talk some more. Right. Let's face it, that's not the way people deal with things when they're in change because when someone's in a company or heck in our lives and they're dealing with change, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of other mm -hmm. things. So instead of listening to learn, I mean, don't lots of people listen to either crush the other person or listen just to get through the conversation? Right. And, and, that, and that takes me to um, personal responsibility because you, you're exactly right. Change, good change, effective change, doesn't happen by accident. It happens on purpose. And there's another set of three, three to think about. And that is, um, anytime you're faced with a change, there are things that you, can, that you can't change. In AA, they call that the serenity prayer. And mm -hmm. probably one of those things we should all have printed somewhere where we see on, on, a, <laughs> regular, on a regular basis. So there are things that you can't change. And when you identify something that you cannot change, take it off the list. The, the coronavirus exists. You cannot change that. It's out there in the world. It is indiscriminate. There is nothing you can do to avoid it. I live in rural Wisconsin. People here think, well, it's never gonna happen here. Oh, oh yeah, I get daily alerts of how many people have it and how many people have died. So it's, it's here. So I can't do anything about that, except that takes me to number two. There are things that I can influence. So I choose to stay in the house. I choose to give my husband lots of masks and he's the one that goes to the grocery store and, and gets, gets the things that we need and works on projects and does that kind of stuff. Um, so, so there are things I can't do anything about, let them go. Do the song from Frozen, let it go. <laughs> Serenity prayer, there are things that I can influence. So those I make decisions about. And then third, there are things that I do have control over. So when I do leave the house, I only go in the car and once a week, Frank and I go through a drive through get a great sandwich from someplace, go down to the Wisconsin River, park the car, watch the kayakers go by, open all the windows, get the breeze going and, and have a lovely picnic in, in the car. So that we can do and we look forward and Friday night is movie night. And so the things that you can do something about, those are the ones that you take action about. And given the other stuff that's going on in the world right now, um, next Saturday in our little town of Wausau, Wisconsin, we're, we're going to have a, a peaceful demonstration and my daughter and I had a conversation yesterday about how um, important that was to us and how in a smaller community, how we could, we could mask and glove and we'd be outside and we could socially isolate and that we would go because it is something we can both influence and do and it is worth the risk for us. So that's the personal responsibility part of change. And, and that's what ultimately will make the change happen. 
so now let's bring that toward our wonderful meeting industry partners who are right now struggling with, do I postpone my event? Do I cancel my event? Is it reinventing our event to go virtual? There's a lot of that that they cannot control. Right. Um, some of that that they can influence. So to speak. What advice? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Just, inside, inside yeah, joke. Inside yeah. joke. That's the name of the National Speakers Association annual conference, which has gone virtual this year. <laughs> what advice do you have for people who are making decisions that impact other people's lives? It's not just our our meeting industry partners. It's people who own businesses, executives, all kinds of people are making decisions that impact other people. In this thing of change in what you just said of, you know, what, what can't we change? What can we influence? What can we actually do something about? As leaders, is there something we need to think about differently? I, I think so. I think that is a um, very pertinent question. And I'm going to give an answer and then I'm going to give a homework assignment. Oh, gee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that seems about right. I didn't, I didn't, sign, can, up. Right? Yeah, I didn't sign up for homework, Chris. Well, well, this is enjoyable homework. <laughs> okay. Trust me. It'll, it'll be worth your while. Um, I, I think sooner rather, first, first of all, start with truth. Uh, you know, start with saying, I, I would be, leaders can say, I would be misleading you if I told you exactly what was going to happen because nobody knows, right? Nobody knows. Nobody knows even what short term is. Nobody knows what middle term is. Nobody knows what long term is. So I don't know. I'm going to give you my very best thinking. So here's the truth as I perceive it right now. Number two, do that sooner rather than later. Because especially from a meetings perspective, and especially because meetings always involve dollars. Mm -hmm. So when you have people who are, who have fragility of income, which I wish I had said that better in a better way, but That's when they, term, uncertainty though. of income, um, when they're trying to say, okay, I, I, I know I have this pot of money. So should I hoard this pot of money so I can be paying overhead or should I, should I spend some of this pot of money so I'm registered for this meeting because there's a lower registration here. Um, if, if, you, if you tell me, look, the odds are, given what we know right now, the odds are that this is going to be, um, turn out to be something different than what we anticipated, then I can make a decision that says, all right, given that, then I'm going to use my limited resources down this path instead of this path, as opposed to keeping me in, in limbo. So right. I would do it as, as quickly and as transparently as, as possible. And then as soon as I know things, and I have to make changes, I would be as explicit as I can, as quickly as I can. If, if you have already paid, here's how your money's coming back. Right. Here's how it's going to be applied. Here's, here's what you're going to get for the value. Um, so, so that transparency piece becomes in, incredibly uh, in, important. It starts from the honesty piece. People, People think that leaders are supposed to have answers. Mm. My leadership philosophy is leaders are supposed to have the best questions. So you could go to your members or to your participants and say, here are the seven questions that we are currently exploring that are going to influence our ultimate decision. If we've missed a question, let us know. Right. And then keep updating people as you start answering those questions. I think that's very smart. All right. What's our homework? Okay. Homework is, again, I actually have a fun homework too. So um, input person wanting to know mm -hmm. what the end is. And I thought, when did the world go through this um, before? And I got to thinking about World War II 
and mm -hmm. the Blitz of London. Again, something that happened, not exactly unexpected, but disastrous for a whole population, turned them completely upside down. New leadership at the time, and the leadership was absolutely critical to, mm -hmm. to what happened. And if you, if you have heard about Eric Larson, who wrote the book, um, The Devil in the White City, about the, oh, yeah. World War, about the World's Fair in Chicago. He's an incredible writer. And, and this book is about when Churchill was named prime minister of, of England, which I didn't realize at the time. My brother-in-law gave me this as an assignment. I didn't, I didn't realize that the Blitz of London started like momentarily after he was named prime minister. And, you know, I mean, we, we think of him as like the be all and end all, but he was not popular. And he, so he got dumped into being prime minister and then they started bombing London and mm -hmm. how he acted as a leader telling the truth and, and, this goes into the story of his daughters who were having an affairs. And I mean, it, it reads like a really great novel and the guy is a wonderful writer, but how he led through that was absolutely um, insightful to me. So I highly recommend this. And so, then- Chris, so I, have to, I have to jump in here. The yes. weird part about you using that book as the example yes. is my wife is listening to that book on tape right now. And this morning we had a half hour discussion about Churchill and about the, the bombing of London and mm. everything you just said, my, my wife would echo it, uh, including that the other book that you cited that he wrote is even better. Yes, yes. Mm. And, and, and the issue is it, it, it is, it is living history. So you hear about how much he drank and what, what he didn't wear when he was in the bathtub. I mean, it's, it's, it's like it comes alive. And, and the contrast to what we're going through is absolutely incredible. So and if you're not into English history, then I would recommend, and you don't have to read the whole thing, this is Doris Kearns Goodwin's book called Leadership in Turbulent Times. Mm. And she profiles Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, um, Lyndon Johnson, and um, FDR. And you just have to read the chapter about, or the section about FDR. So it is entitled, The Leader and the Times. And it's, it's the chapter on crisis management. And so it is the same time as, as the Blitz in, in London. And of course, what happened was FDR was elected president and the banks failed. And he called a bank holiday. And he did it with no idea that it would work. There, liter literally, there was not enough money in the banks. And so he did his first fireside chat and told people, don't worry, the banks are fine. It was not the truth. The banks were not <laughs> fine. And then they all sat around and said, what are we going to do Monday if all the people go to the bank to, to get their money? And, and they had no idea what they would do because if, if they had, the country would have fallen apart. What happened, of course, I'm telling the story here. What happened was people lined up to put money in the banks because they trusted he, he was mm. so sincere when he told the truth, you know, like, look, this is going to be really hard and we're not sure if it's going to work, but I put my trust in the American people. So what you see in reading those two stories is leadership in times of uncertainty and taking the chance of acting like a real leader and having people follow you. So if, if you want to refresh your spirit, those are two places to go. I think we're all in uh, in need of a little refreshing of spirit uh, right. these days. All right, I like I like that kind of homework, so I appreciate okay. that very much. I, I have one more if you're okay. willing to indulge me. Sure, I, I gotta find it because this is way too fun. So I called my daughter, who is a reader like I am, and I said, "Okay, I need something that's totally absorbing. I need to get out of all this other stuff." 
And so she brought me a bag full of books. This is the first one. It's called His Majesty's Dragon. It's a series of about eight books. They're all very thick. So for those of us who are great readers, and, and it's a quasi science fiction story. So it's, it's, about, um, it's about the Napoleonic Wars and dragons are real and they talk and they're smart. So if, if you are a Game of Thrones people person and you like dragons, I will tell you this will put you in another world and you will spend more time here being very happy about dragons as a possibility. So if, if you really want to go someplace way, way away, that'll do it for you. Escapism is good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is very good. So Chris, if a leader or a company is out there wondering what they should be doing in this time of change, how would they get a hold of you so that you could come in and, and point the right direction? Um, coming in being a... <laughs> via Zoom. <laughs> via Zoom. Yeah, right. um, I'll get my frame out, right? Um, you, can, you can reach me at uh, chris at change101.com. And that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on the webinar talk show and, and sharing your, your thoughts and your theories about change with everybody. I, I really found that to be enjoyable. Thank you. I am so glad. It's been great fun. And if you're one of our meeting industry partners who is thinking about whether that live or in-person event is going to be rescheduled, reinvented, canceled. Made hybrid. Yeah, right. Tom and I would love to have a conversation with you about the six years of experience we've had doing these sort of things. And we're at your service to help you make those kind of decisions. And they're really, really good at it. <laughs> well, and there's so many ways that you can present content. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to just be the same thing every single speaker with their PowerPoint for an hour. It, you, you know, Eliz and I have worked with a couple of different groups and, and sometimes we'll do interviews, sometimes we'll have panels, sometimes there will be a presentation that we'll then dissect with the speaker. There's so many different formats in which you can get people to engage so that it's not boring for the audience. Right, and ways to create community, which is really, if we're honest, we, we go for the content, but a lot of what we go for in an in-person event is the community. And you don't have to lose that if you're taking your event into this virtual landscape. So we're here at your disposal. Hope uh, that our interview with Chris was fantastic and that uh, led you to some thoughts about change. You can find us at webinartalkshow.com or on our Facebook page, Webinar Talk Show. Hey, Tom, what do we have coming up for the rest of the week? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. The, the, we have so many things scheduled for the next I couple know. of weeks. It's crazy. So Sam Silverstein is going to be with us on thing. Thursday. And I think this is going to be a great one-two punch for the, for the week, talking really about how we navigate change. And then he's going to be talking about what accountable, accountability looks like in a leader. I think that's a good one too. I think those two things are so important to be connected. Because yep. as I use the example, if leaders are not accountable to sustain the change, it's never going to happen. All right. We'll see you in a couple days. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.